it just shows that you never can predict when people will reach their breaking point and when suddenly what you've been told has been was impossible will just seem inevitable. Um, and I mean, what's just so incredible is how often we're told that people don't care, that they're apathetic, that they're happy with the status quo. Particularly Americans, you know, we're always sort of underselling Americans about what they want, what they're capable of. Um, there's just such an industry of, of, of really underselling this country. And what's been amazing to see is just the hunger out there for connection, for decommodified space for really radical ideas. Um, and this is such a joyful space, it's such a joyful movement. Uh, people get addicted to it. I mean, this is the thing, there's no coercion, there's no sense of duty, like, oh God, you know, I have to go to the march. I mean, it's the exact opposite. Um, it's that people want to spend their Saturday nights here. They want to bring friends here. They want to come every day. That's what happened to me. I mean, I didn't plan to be here every day, but I've been here every day and it's just heartbreaking to leave. And people are just getting a taste of another possible way of living. And that's so important in a culture where our biggest problem is not that we don't know the failures of capitalism, it's that we can't imagine another way. We can't imagine another system. This generation grew up being told that there is no alternative to capitalism, that this is all there is. And so when you taste another alternative, when you feel it, when you see it, when you experience it, it's life-changing because you'll never believe again that there is no alternative. You know, nobody predicted this movement, so anybody who claims that they know where this is going is just lying. Um, you know, this is already gotten so far beyond what the original organizers imagined um, and you know what what I hope is that this uh, this moment really turns into a sustained popular movements for social change with the institutions that are needed to go with that and that means cultural that means media that means arts it also means politics it means having the ability for to speak for itself you know, my concern about this movement is that if it stays sort of just amorphous, um, then then all of this energy here will, will just be used and channeled by people who may have much more reformist demands and who really aren't dreaming big. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's fine for people who, you know, just want to raise taxes on the rich or just want to regulate the banks to use the momentum and energy of this moment to try to push through their demands. But I don't think that that should be all this movement is. I think this movement should be able to make much more radical demands than that. But not even demands, be able to articulate another narrative for what society should be like um, and have the ability to unleash a much more radical imagination for what, for what this world can be. Um, but it has to develop the democratic means to speak for itself in order for that to happen. You know, when people are trying to co-opt you, um, sometimes the reaction is to go in the totally opposite direction and just be like, you know, we don't have a structure, we don't have an ideology, um, and nobody can pin us down. Um, I've been part of parts of movements that have made that decision, and I think that that would be a mistake, and I also think that it doesn't live up to the moral responsibility of this moment. So many lives are on the line right now. Um, this system is crashing. It's crashing economically and it's crashing ecologically. Um, the stakes are too high for us not to make the absolute most of this moment.